Yo, dudes. <clears throat> Happy uh, Friday. Coming live to you. Uh, you just got done listening to In Your Arms by, hopefully you do not kill me, dude. Um, either it's Saib, Saab. I've also pronounced, I've also just spelled it out for uh, Google. Uh, S-A-I-B. Um found this producer slash musician slash artist on uh, Spotify, a big fan of uh, the Jazz Vibes playlist. I'm a lot of chill hop. I listen to a lot of chill hop and lo-fi radio uh, when, I, when I do some of my work. And I came across this dude uh, while well, listening to some tunes. And um, big fan. There's actually a couple of songs that... Uh, you will find on um, this month's, uh, last month's playlist, I should say, uh, which is coming soon, um, as well as um, a couple of tra uh, th this track, In Your Arms, which is on uh, this month's play or next month's playlist, the one that's getting ready to come out. So if uh, you are liking those sounds, let me know, drop a comment, and I'll be sure to you know, dive more into the artist. Um, but that's just kind of how I do it. You know, everybody has a different work style. Everyone has different, you know, wants, needs, and desires. Uh, you know, one of the ways that I love to just kind of find my groove is listening to some good music. Good music just, I mean, you guys tell me, does it does, does music put you in a good place? Think about that for a second. You know, what does music do to you? And if it's not music, what does your environment do for you? Right, you know, and your environment can be everything from, you know, uh, your your home at night. It could be the office that you go to. It could be the environment in your head, the things that you tell yourself, or the messages that that you receive. And I want to encourage you to, you know, especially if you're a founder, if you're if you're watching the live version of this video, uh, you are a member of the. Side Hustle, Mako Startup School for Creative Entrepreneurs and Founders. Kind of like Hogwarts for Creative Entrepreneurs. This is my Facebook group um, that I run lovingly uh, as a result of uh, wanting to give back to the startup, the small business community uh, that I am such a big advocate for and love being a part of. Um, so if you are watching uh, the live version of this, you are uh, a member of my crew. If you're watching a recording of this video uh, that means uh, that you know maybe you and I have recently connected offline or you discovered this for the first time on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram you know whatever it is hello welcome um, you know we we're just talking about environments and you know how important they are regardless of what you're doing whether you're working whether you're relaxing with friends um, your environment is just something that I would recommend you do your best to protect and you know, make sure it's something that you feel completely comfortable and confident in. Um, the whole reason why I was listening to some lo-fi is actually I'm a little stressed out. Um, again, if you're watching the live version of this, I owe you an apology as I still tinker with this model on going live once a week with the training. Sometimes I over overextend myself and today was one of those days um, so hopefully this doesn't be, continue to be a theme. This has been a theme in my past, if I'm being honest. And I'm just kind of overexerting myself. Um, so if I, it, I want to be consistent and I also want to be reliable for you guys in terms of, you know, consistent time and a, a, a time that you know I can kind of count on in order to make sure 
that I can do all the many things that I'm responsible for. Um, but that being said, uh, you know, I was late today, which I was not a big fan of. Um, you know, I just had too much stuff going on, right? And that is why we are in this community together is because we have to realize as, you know, small business owners, as people that are doing it, you know, for the first time or the third time, whatever it is, this is hard, right? This game, this entrepreneurship game, this founders game, this side hustler game, this small business game, this CEO game, whatever it is that you want to call it, it can be a challenge. And it's important to have a safe space, to have community, to have people that understand your ups and your ups and downs, uh, the best things about you, the, the, the weakest things about you, and to provide you with an opportunity to vent, to improve, to develop skills, to meet new people, to make money, you know, whatever it is. And so that's why um, we have our crew. That's why I do this is because, you know, in addition to running my brand Startup Charts, which is responsible for helping me to put out all this great content for entrepreneurs and creatives, I also run two other brands, uh, Food Tribe and uh, California Comfort Tours, which are you know, two projects that are very near and dear to me. And, you know, sometimes those two projects drive me bonkers. And because they drive me bonkers and because I like to solve problems, I then will come back to you guys and either talk to you about the lesson or, you know, bring an expert in front of you or promote an event or, you know, talk to you about, you know, what I'm experiencing as a way to continue to push my development and my company's development and my company's development. And uh, hopefully you learn some, something along the way, right? Because I learn from you guys all the time. So, I'm being nice to myself today. I'm late. It's all good. We're figuring this out. Point is, is that we're here. So, shout out to you guys. I want to know, how are you doing? Where are you coming from? Do me a favor and uh, drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know who you are, uh, where you are. Bonus points if you want to tell me you know, what you're up to. And that could be you're eating a sandwich. Uh, you could be watching the movie, you could be hanging out with Bay, or you could be, you know, in the weeds and working on your business, which I hope it's that last one. I hope you're working on your business right now because uh, I'm working on my business and we're working on our businesses always, right? which is why we're here today. Uh, today, we are going to be uh, talking a little bit about uh, planting the seeds of a legacy business. And if that sounds confusing to you, if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, don't worry about it. We're going to get there. You know, but before we do, I just, you know, I want to get, get a little bit of a sense of, you know, how you guys are. And, you know, hopefully you're as excited about today's lesson as I am, because, you know, a lot of this has been as a result of some tough lessons that I've learned and some good lessons as well. So before we hop in, you know, I want to make sure that you're mentally good. How are you doing? Are you ready to receive this blessing, this message? I'm about to drop to you guys. Hopefully you are. If not, hit the pause button. Come back. You know, I don't want you to waste this information. I don't want you to waste this time. If you're not in a space, you know, kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of today's conversation, right? If you're not in an environment where you are ready to receive a message or, you know, to communicate a message, that's totally cool. You know, like it's it's no sweat off of my skin. Does it's not gonna hurt me, it's not gonna hurt my feelings. Um, you know, I want people that are very interested and excited and engaged and can't wait to, you know, learn the next lesson to, 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 to watch this video. And if you're at a place where you're not able to focus on, on things, you know, 100%, not to say that you're not, you're not going to be able to you know, walk away with anything, um, but, you know, it's my belief that if you're really able to pay attention and you're at a place where you're open to receiving today's message, um, it's going to be uh, that much more effective for you. Um... So, you know, now that I know how you guys are doing, hopefully it's well. Um, what's been going on in the, it's the news. The news has been riddled with coronavirus stuff. You guys have coronavirus? Please don't have coronavirus. If you do, I'm thinking about you. I want you to take care of your body. Whatever it is that you have to do in order to get healthy, please do that. But this damn coronavirus is affecting business as usual. Me personally, I'm a germaphobe. 
So I'm, I've been busting out like my cleaning supplies and get ready to spray down, you know, my, my, my whole car, getting ready to take everything on the laundry. And that has ramifications, right? So if you think I'm the only one who's changed my habits, my behaviors as a result of this damn coronavirus, uh, you're mistaken. Everyone is changing their habits and behaviors. And that's how, you know, culture and economies work, right? Things happen at a very local level. You know, what's going down on the end of your street, right? What's going on with your next door neighbor? And if it's big enough, right, or if it's able to start catching momentum and people are, you know, start capturing energy, people are talking about it and sharing information and communicating things, well, then all of a sudden it becomes a cultural phenomenon. And then what happens when things become a cultural phenomenon? Well, all of a sudden, needs, wants, and desires are created around that cultural phenomenon. So in the case of coronavirus, this started out as, oh, uh, <coughs> actually, I just had to really cough. Somebody in China, you know, this is what the, the, the media is reporting, caught a cold. And it was just a normal, regular sickness until, oh, no, this is not a regular type of sickness. We got validation from doctors, local doctors, that this is a new type of virus called the coronavirus, or this COVID-19, I believe, is the technical term for it. And then all of a sudden, what happens? Oh, your neighbor down the street catches the covid the coronavirus, you know, the COVID-19. And then someone two blocks down the street catches it. And then all of a sudden, more news uh, news uh, media outlets are, are reporting on it. And people are trading messages on social media. And then, oh, wait, it's all of a sudden popping up in Africa. And then, oh, wait, oh, no, it's all of a sudden it's popping up in Europe. And, oh, no, we're, we're starting to follow the story, right? Like, all of a sudden, you have this message, this thing that started out hyper-local has all of a sudden become this huge international thing, right? And that's how marketing and communication messages work, right? So the idea is that you wanna capture something that's happening on a hyper local level, which is you, and in this case, you and your business, right? And hopefully you're able to help control the narrative in order to you know, spread this message that you know is able to get to the people that you want to get. Not that we want to give people coronavirus, and I don't want your marketing and communication message, messages to feel like coronavirus. However, I think that this is a relevant topic or, or a relevant, uh, yeah, current event uh, in order to you know help talk about what what we're going to be discussing today. Right. So you remember that. So all like this coronavirus, which has been dominating the news cycle for the past several weeks, you know, started out as this very hyper local story in China, and now all of a sudden has international ramifications with the way that we conduct business. Things are crazy. If you go to like the store, people are buying bottles of water in bulk, and there's like no canned foods, and well, there's been some talks of, you know, the, the media sensationalizing what the heck is actually going on, but you know, all of a sudden, this is something that is dominating headlines, and as a result of this, all of a sudden, new industries start popping up, right? Those damn face masks, that people, those surgical masks, there's, people are starting to sell them, right, for like twelve to fifteen dollars a piece. If there are no coronavirus around; those things would be selling for like ten cents a piece or thirty cents a piece. They're not very expensive at all, right? But you had this hyper local event that was able to catch international waves, and then all of a sudden started creating new wants, needs, and desires in order to respond to that cultural shift. So you know, drug and pharmaceutical companies are probably loving this. Doctors are probably loving this right now because this gives them an opportunity to, you know make some additional money off of, you know, what their regular business models are. So this is almost like a new product offer opportunity or product line for them, right? And so, again, this is highly relevant when we want to talk about, like, you know, planting a seed, right, and, and, and having that seed grow into something that can then spread out into, you know, the rest of the world. And that's what we really care about as founders, right, as entrepreneurs. We want to talk, take this message, this problem that only we can see, the seed that starts within us, right? We want to plant it and we want to nurture it. And eventually we want to have a bunch of trees that are out there in the world and you know, spreading our message on our behalf. So stay healthy. Don't catch the damn coronavirus. But let's use the coronavirus as an example you know, today to talk about how we want to uh, take a seed and grow that into something that is hopefully able to spread to the rest of the world, right? All right. So uh, in our Facebook group, 
We are growing, guys. We have some uh, new members who I want to shout out real quick. Let's uh, let's show some love to our to our new members. Um, all right. So I'm hopping in the Facebook group right now just because there's there's a lot of you guys, man. I think so far this year uh, we're at about 78 group members. I've got a goal of uh, we want to help 1,000 uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Creative. On I want to help 1,000 creative entrepreneurs. That means I want a thousand people in this group. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I was personally uh, devastated by the death of Nipsey Hussle last year. You know, just somebody that I was hoping that one day I'd be able to do business with, just because I was so inspired by what he was doing and his message and you know his story. Um, you know, with his untimely murder, it was a murder. Uh, he became a martyr, and as a result of that, his message, his spirit, everything that he embodied. Uh, became something that a whole bunch of people, not just me, um, have you know wanted to you know continue to to co communicate and, and spread, right? So that's another example of like a seed starting with somebody, and you know spreading into something that just became something big. Um, so thank you, thank you. If you're a part of this group, I think we started out this year with about 38 members. Now we're at 78. Um, I want to see a thousand by the end of the year. So hopefully we can see some exponential growth. Um, who am I welcoming this week? This week, I am welcoming my boy Matthew. Uh, Matthew runs es Escape Solutions. Um, that is a marketing agency based in Inglewood, if memory serves me correct. Uh, thank you for joining the group, Matthew. Matthew and I had the opportunity to meet at Startup Grind South LA. Um, I'm also working with his business partner and his sometimes collaborator, Javon Sanders. Javon is the founder of Toss It Up Salads. Uh, we had a great, great, great uh, group call uh, late la or early last week, and I plan to continue the conversation. So, you know, welcome to you guys both, Javon and uh, Matthew. I also want to invite, or excuse me, I want to say thank you uh, for joining to, to, to Tamara. Tamara is the founder of uh, Culinary and Cannabis. Uh, Culinary and Cannabis is a hospitality and events company based in Southern California. Uh, she and I have uh, been able to do some content together in the past and are looking to actually have an event, which I will tell you guys a little bit more about uh, towards the end of the call. Uh, but welcome, welcome, welcome tomorrow. Um, and then who else do we have? I think that's it this week. Um, we have three new members. And if I'm forgetting anyone, apologies. Um, but I'm excited to have you guys here. All right. I'm, I'm really excited to have you guys here. Um, and I'm also ready to start talking about what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's hit this presentation. All right. All right. So let me open up my screen. Okay. All right, dude. So, you know, what have we been talking about? We've been talking about planting the seeds of a 30 year legacy business. And you might be asking yourself, well, Terrence, what the hell is a legacy business? A legacy business is a business that lasts longer than its original founder. And what I mean by that is uh, when you have the ability to uh, create and execute against your vision, right? Uh, you're, as a founder, you've been able to create a brand. Uh, what happens after you leave the company? Well, if you don't have a legacy business, that company folds and dies and you know goes away. You did, it goes away. But a legacy business is something that continues to run, continues to operate, without its founder, without its original founding team, um, because it has become a living, breathing thing. It's almost a person. It's not quite a person. It's mostly a shared set of ideals and principles that continue to change and become more and more dynamic as time progresses. Um, but yeah, that is what a legacy business is. So if you want to look at legacy businesses or ones that we can you know, kind of point to, like there's some great ones. There's like Disney, and there's Coke, and there's Fox, and there's all sorts of businesses that its founding team is no longer a member of, but has become this entity in and of itself that continues to change and offer new pro and, and new products and services and excites and delights new generations based off of current market uh, conditions. And the reason why legacy businesses exist and why they can continue to exist without the original small business owner or without the original founder is because they are hyper narrowed in on their vision and that vision continues to change. It's, it's a dynamic thing, right? And one, one really great way to be able to do that, to be able to change as the times change, is by baking market research into your process. 
which is what we're going to be talking about today, guys. So what's market research? According to Brand, uh, Braden Becker of HubSpot, in 100 words or less, market research is the process of examining an industry's buyers, the product these buyers want, and where they're currently getting it. By engaging the right people in data, a business can use this research to position itself in the market and predict where the market will go in the future. You follow me? Market research is the process of examining an industry's buyers, the products these buyers want, and where they're currently getting it. By engaging the right people in data, a business can use this research to position itself in the market and predict where the market will go in the future. Boom. You guys get it? That's the question that we're answering today. A little bit about Startup Sharks. Startup Sharks is a consultancy community and platform for business professionals. Uh, the Mako Startup School, uh, if you, so again, if you're watching this video live, this is an added value thing. This is a Facebook group uh, that I have for uh, clients uh, previous or of the past, of the future, uh, of the present, um, and people that are just that love that are startup nerds like me that, are, that, that that love talking about business and the intersection between business and culture and and like using business as an opportunity to you know figure out what they're good at and and and, and people who like business in order to connect with people. That's what we're doing. Guys. We're just talking about commerce and business and. And, and, and solving problems and being the best versions of ourselves, right? And as an extension of being the best versions of ourselves, our business operates um, at a high level of efficiency. So I offer brand coaching, um, digital marketing services. I also offer business development, sales, and um, uh, product development services, um, you know, in addition to this Facebook group, right? So if you're ready for a deeper relationship, uh, you already got an idea, you've already got a product, you've already got a service, you've already got a company, uh, well, you know, I have an opportunity to help you out there as well. Cool. Again, guys, so we've been talking a lot about legacy um, in our Facebook group. Um, and, you know, a lot of that is rooted in our theme word, our word of the, of the month or of the year, excuse me, which is enduring. Right. And so as a result of our, you know, our, our theme of the year or yeah, our theme of the year, our word of the year, um, you know, the idea is that we want to figure out ways to create an enduring brand, right? We want to figure out ways to be an enduring founder. We really want the, that theme word to, you know, um, to, to, to really dictate our activities as founders, as small business owners uh, for the year. Um, and so, you know, during the month of January, uh, you know, we applied that theme word of enduring in order to lay the foundations of a startup. Right. And so um, in terms of, of figuring out an enduring brand or how to create an enduring startup, we really narrowed in on our mission and our values and our vision and our vision. Right. Um, we, we started talking a little bit about our purpose um, in January, uh, but really dived into purpose during the month of February as we identified, uh, you know, our shared values and principles uh, in order to figure out uh, what we would need from teammates and how to how to identify the right teammates who believe in the same things as we do. Um, so during the month of March, um, you know, we've really been focused on, um, you know, figuring out, again, like how do you create an enduring brand um, outside, like, you know, once you've been able to figure out like the team that you're going to need and once you understand who you are, uh, well, then it really boils down to understanding, at least this is in my opinion, um, understanding um, who you want to be in the future, right? Um, and developing uh, uh, developing the path to get there. And one way of developing that path, or you know, my recommendation at least for developing that path is uh, starting with uh, market research. So if you understand the type of business that you want to be, the type of tree that you want to be, right? Well, then you can uh, reverse engineer um, three branches, the three core components of that that tree that you're going to need to build. Um, and uh, you're gonna have to basically prepare your soil. You, know, you have to prepare the, the the you have to be able to prepare the environment right around you uh, for the tree that you're getting ready to grow that only you can see, right? And because March is a Women's History Month, uh, we are going to be exploring what it takes to to, to plant a legacy business tree. Um, through the vantage point of some really kick-ass women who are doing a good job of, uh, you know, conducting market research so that they can go ahead and expand um, 
those three branches of that legacy business tree. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know and I'll do my best to you know explain a little bit better. Uh, but hopefully you are following along and especially if you have been a member of this community for, for some time, you should know, you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully this is making sense. So this is just visualization, right? So when we looked at uh, month one uh, and month two really, it was really about uh, understanding um, you know, your seeds of purpose as a founder, um, understanding you know, how to nurture your values uh, from there, you know, here, here in uh, March and you know, moving into April, we're gonna figure out how to hydrate your mission Right, so keep your mission going, and you know, keeping it quenched, and you know, making sure that you're on target, um, and then hopefully growing that into a beautiful tree, like the one we have right here, right, um, where you can kind of see, right? you keep your vision. All right, so what can market research can do for you? What, what's market research good for? Lots of things. Let me tell you, my three favorite things to talk about. Because, you know, three reasons why I believe we are all in business are, just, are for time, money, and energy. As human beings, human beings of purpose specifically, these are the three things we want the most of. We want the most time, we want the most money, we want the most energy, right? You don't have to use the word money, maybe you want to use the word resources, right? But these are the three things that we're competing for. You want time to be able to do things, you want to do what the hell you want to do. You want to, you want to work, you want to travel, you want to eat out. Whatever it is you want to do, you want to live life on your own terms. You want to use your time in the way that you see fit. You don't want people telling you how to spend your time. Your resources, whether it's your house, whether it's your 401k, whether it's your network, whether it's your TV, whether it's your car, whatever resources that you have at your disposal, uh, you know, you really want those. You want to hold on to them. Most of us want to hold on to them as long as possible. We want to give and we want to help other people, but you know, we... We want to have a place to live, and we want to be able to drive places, and we want to have clothes on our back. And, you know, there's just certain things that we want. And then we're we talking about energy, right? Well, you know, we want to be able to choose the way that we spend our time and the way that we spend our resources. So, you know, it's if you have a car, do you want to spend three hours a day driving to your job, or do you want to spend 15 minutes driving to your job because that gives you more energy to then at the end of the day, go work out. Well, you know, in my opinion, market research, if you do it the right way, it's going to be able to save you or allow you to amass the most amount of these resources or, 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 the, or allow you to accumulate these resources in the right way, I guess I should say. So, um, you know, that's what market research is good for. It's good for helping you save time, help you save money and help you create energy, right? What can't you do with all those three things? Now, when we talk about market research, there are basically two kinds, right? And just pausing for one second, who here is still unclear about what market research is? Because if we have to go back to the top of this presentation, I will do that. But I just want everybody to be clear on what market research is, right? What all we're doing is we are asking our market, the people that we wanna help, the people that we wanna sell to, we're asking them questions. We want to get to know them. We, we are conducting research, right? And research typically is formed in two ways. There's qualitative research and there's quantitative research. Qualitative research is the first kind that we're going to talk about. And that is exploratory research. So this is like get opinions, motivations. This is asking people for asking people questions and getting their responses. These are, you know, again, people, this is, we're measuring quality here. Quantitative research, on the other hand, is much more numbers focused. This is much more concerned about collecting data points, right? And, you know, by quantifying the problem by way of uh, uh, having numerical data or numbers data, we're then able to uh, translate those into statistics, right? And both of these types of research are highly important to the way that we operate our businesses, right? You know, we want to have qualitative uh, uh, research. We want people to tell us how they feel about certain things. And we want quantitative research. We want to see how people are actually doing the things that they're talking about, right? Those are the two types of market research that we're going to be focused on. And let me tell you why market research is so damn important. Listen, 42 businesses fail every year because there's no market for their product or service. 42%. So if there's 100 businesses, 42 of them 
fail within the first year because no one wants to buy the thing that they got into business for. They don't care, right? And then guess what? Another 14% of small business failure happens because they ignore their customers, right? And what does that mean? That means, hey, you're not, just because you solve one problem doesn't mean that you're, con you're continuing to solve problems. Your customers are dynamic. They have new problems every day, right? So when you build market research into, you, into your process, into the way that you run your business for the next 30 years, well, hey, guess what? You're really laying the foundations of a legacy business because a legacy business understands that if they want to last longer than just today, they have to be thinking about problems that happen tomorrow. And the only way to make sure that you're helping your problem, you're, you're helping solve problems today and solving problems tomorrow is by working with your customers close and making sure that you're adding value on a daily basis and then asking them questions about things that are happening on their side so that you can then take that data back and then hopefully create new and different and more unique ways in order to solve problems. And you see how it's a cyclical thing, right? It's a cycle. I have to go this way. It's a cycle, baby, right? And that's what we care about. We want, we want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's a give and take asking questions and then we're solving problems and then we're asking questions and then we're solving problems in order to make sure that we're able to last longer than just today. Again, so if you need help understanding what market research means, uh, what I would say is a uh, U.S. Small Business Administration website is a great resource for you. I can drop some links if you would like. You have to let me know because I'm not just dropping links in, in these uh, comments anymore, guys. I, I need you well, unless I think it's really valuable, but I do need you guys to uh, start letting me know the things that is valuable for you and the things that you're just kind of like, eh, eh, I don't really care about. Uh, so, if the, uh, if, you know, if, if you need me to drop this link for the U.S. Small Business Administration, let me know. Uh, but what I want you to understand is that in terms of market research, uh, there are a couple key reasons why we want to do it, right, um, which are listed here. Uh, we want to figure out demand. You want to understand um, a market size. You want to get some uh, economic indicators. Uh, you want to figure out a location to run our business or to operate. We want to understand market saturation. So how many similar options are you know already available? And then pricing, right? So market research is a really great opportunity for us to get you know some really deep data and information and understanding, right? Um, regarding like these key areas that are just going to be super important for you. Um, if you're interested in making wise business decisions. How are you guys doing? Are we drinking everything in? I know it's, I know it's a lot of data. Hopefully, um, I'm not going too fast for you. Um, but I have uh, two just anecdotal stories that um, I hope will make you guys uh, or help you guys to understand and see the value of uh, market research. And I will share links to uh, these two articles just because I think that they're um, very fascinating. Um, so this first one is, uh, hopefully I'm not killing her name. Her name is uh, Nicole Sh uh, Shariat Farb, uh, who is a former banker and the founder of a mail order uh, Darby Smart Craft Kits. And, uh, you know, what I would say is, you know, again, like we're, this is a Women's History Month. Uh, so we are um, looking at our our, our, th our our theme this month, which is enduring market research uh, through the lens of kick-ass women who are doing an amazing job of uh, you know leveraging the subject market research in order to get out their businesses. And um, again, so Nicole again, she's the founder of a uh, uh, like a, a arts and crafts uh, uh, product, which I'm not too familiar with, and I don't know about you guys. But that doesn't mean that there aren't so applicable lessons, right? which is a great thing about telling stories and about networking and about doing research like this, right? Talking to other entrepreneurs, getting their opinions, you know, uh, uh, allowing them to tell you anecdotal stories about, you know, some of the challenges that they had. Well, that data then allows us to, you know, uh, 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 become smarter business owners or hopefully smarter business owners because we have access to new information which then, you know, we can combine with the old data, the stuff that we already have in our head, and make new and informed decisions, right? So I think stories are super important. Um, and, you know, once you start getting clients and, you know, scaling bigger clients, um, you know, start taking some of this data, right, that, that you've developed, this because this is research that you can then take in order to help you grab 
new and different clients. That being said, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, um, but you know, I just think that uh, this story is, is relevant, and um, you know, and, and just because you know, even if you're not into arts and crafts, doesn't mean that you can't learn anything, right? So I'll, I'll read you this quick story. Um, so uh, Nicole, uh, she typically listened to conventional business advice. Uh, you know, when it came to developing her new e or marketplace, which was called a Darby Smart Crafts. And so what she did was uh, she kept her old job while she conducted market research, which is brilliant, right? Uh, so she wasn't a crafter when she started her business. Um, and, you know, believe it or not, she told uh, Good Housekeeping during one of her interviews that her lack of crafting skills was actually one of the reasons why she was able to refine the concept for the company. So, you know, she attempted to replicate thank you notes that she saw on Pinterest and they sucked. They weren't very good, right? She actually said that they looked like a four-year-old made them. So what she did was she went to the parking lot of Michael's Craft Stores, which if you live in the, in the States and are watching this, Michael's is an arts and craft store. It's a huge national brand. You know, again, I've been there like once or twice for like school projects to get stuff, but I haven't, you know, that's not my, de I don't fall within their typical uh, demographic, right? But she understood that arts and crafts people, that they went to Michael's. And so what did she do? Um, she would stop people as they were coming in and out of the store and ask them what they thought about buying crafts online. And so this is, you know, a digital version almost of cold calling, where cold calling is a market research technique where you just pick up the phone and, you, you know, you ask your customers questions over the phone. And so what she would do is, like, she would get people's information and send them an email who were putting their projects on the Pinterest. And the whole purpose of this market research was to figure out how to connect um, the blog, the craft bloggers' uh, crafts, like their projects, and figuring out how to you know, then turn those into you know, smart kits that she could then sell on her own platform, which is brilliant, right? Now, our second story, our second case story that we're going to talk about in terms of the power of uh, market research is uh, Debbie Sterling, who is uh, the inventor of Goldilocks. And so, uh, you know, I love this story because uh, Debbie is interested in uh, STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, which not a lot of people are. I wasn't for the very longest time because I was scared of numbers, and it wasn't until I found a couple mentors and people that told me not to be scared of numbers that I really just started geeking out on like science and technology and you know continue to explore today. Um, so you know, let me just go ahead and hop into Debbie's story. Uh, so she was a uh, mechanical engineering student um, at her, uh, her, her 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 school's uh, program, um, and she was frustrated because it felt like you know a lot of girls weren't interested in getting involved in engineering and other science, technology, engineering, and, and mathematics careers. And so what she did was she went to the pink aisles of toy stores in order to conduct her, her research. And so what she did, decided to do, she didn't stand up for grab, by the way, was that she wanted to disrupt pink aisles by creating construction toy products based on mechanical engineering concepts that were designed specifically for girls. And so her market research with girls and their families served to you know basically discover how kids play and what they prefer in their toys and what she was able to find out as an entrepreneur um well number one she was able to then take that research in order to create new products and design new products and even you know uh, develop the marketing campaigns around them but then she was also able to figure out the kids are attracted to the things that they have been you know taught were important from a cultural perspective coming full circle to what we we're talking about earlier in today's conversation Kids were also, um, they, they like uh, playing with toys that they were encouraged to play with over and over again, right? Number three, kids like situations that are funny or adventuresome. And number four, kids want to see what, they want to play with what they see on TV. And that's what she's able to learn by conducting some simple market research. So two great examples, guys, of the importance of market research. And I hope you guys see the, the, the common theme, right? It started out with a pain point that both of these ladies or both of these women saw or experienced within themselves, right? And then what did they do? They went to go validate that pain point with the culture, with other people, right? And then what did they do? They then turned the culture, how the culture all of a sudden had needs and pain points that, you know, weren't being addressed and they created products and solutions 
in order to match those pro uh, 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 problem or pain points, right? So you see all the, all this stuff works, and that's all a matter of just asking questions. So some very high level benefits of conducting market research. You get to define what you want to learn more about, which if you're a purpose driven entrepreneur, that's fantastic. Because if you're starting out with your purpose, you're starting out with you're starting you're starting ahead of the curve, right? You're starting out getting getting to learn a little bit more about what you care about. Market research also allows you to be curious. You're you're able to create hypotheses and, and ask all sorts of weird questions, whatever your heart's desire. Because the whole purpose is in the name of science, right? You're just collecting information. You're asking people questions. So if you want to be curious and weird, go do that. That's a really great benefit of market research. Guys, market research gives you a direct opportunity to spend time with the people that you want to spend time with, your customers. So it gives you it gives you leeway to ask them questions. You want to do it in a way that protects their time and you know make sure that they know that you respect them. But ultimately, it's about you getting to spend time with the people that you care about, that you want to help. It allows you to capture really great information, which is what we all care about as founders, right? We all want access to really great information. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, getting started. Uh, with market research. Uh, some tools that I would recommend that you consider are uh, Typeform, Zoom, Google Forms, and Facebook Groups. Uh, these are all really great tools in order to help you uh, you know, uh, start having better and different conversations uh, with your clients. Some of them you know, can be used anonymously. Uh, some of them, like Zoom, for example, is gonna be, you know, it's an interview tool uh, that you can use in order to have you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, but just some things to think about if, you, if you're ready to start having conversations with people. And then what happens, right? Once you've started conducting market research and you started capturing that qualitative and quantitative data using these tools, well, you know, think of a catchy name, kind of like, you know, the women in our example. You can buy a domain, a URL, a website, and then start creating content. Take pictures, write blogs, record videos. Record videos of you conducting market research. Use your content in order to ask questions, right? Conduct even more market research online. And before you know it, you're gonna be creating a new product in order to solve a problem. And then you're gonna keep asking questions and keep conducting market research so you can solve new and different problems in the future. Guys, I am Terrence Latimer. I am the founder of Startup Sharks. Uh, in addition to me, I work with a team of consultants, uh, sharks, who are specialists in startups, right? You know, our mission, the mission that we've chosen to accept is to help you, the founder, the creative, the, the side hustler, the student that is looking to launch their business and doesn't know how, the retiree who wants to, you know, hop back in the game, the guy that is ready to quit his job, the girl who started that company that one time and didn't go anywhere, but you know, you wanted to go, you're gonna pick it back up. We are here for you. If you're watching the recording of this video, I want you to understand uh, that we are available to you. I want you to join our Facebook community, which is about making our art and um, sharing that with others. And that's all I have, guys. Um, this, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys uh, taking time out in order to uh, in order to chat with me today. If uh, you have any additional questions, feel free to let me know. I'm here for you. I want to work with you. Um, we, uh, in terms of uh, a couple updates, on uh, March 28th, I am having a workshop in Los Angeles. Uh, the workshop is going to be around the three P's of uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurship. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about your purpose, uh, this is a workshop for you. Uh, I will have details uh, for you guys uh, soon. Um, I'm also, we also have uh, the, uh, a, a can of business in uh, the high desert bake sale and uh, panel coming up at the end of the month. Uh, more details on that as well. Um, but guys, I appreciate you. I hope this lesson uh, was valuable, and I want you to get started on uh, your market research this week, all right? Peace and love. If you need help with digital marketing, with product development, with sales and business development, uh, let me know. Uh, Calendly.com forward slash Terrence dash, dash Latimer, and I'll be in touch. Peace and love, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great week.
Later.